Hey, what is up guys? David Zhao here, and I'm going to bet the majority of you have never seen how wide a nine millimeter lens is. So for reference right now, I'm shooting on the Sony 24 millimeter F 1.4 G Master. Real quick, this is like the framing, the composition that you see, right? Guess how wide it's gonna get when I switch the lenses. Are you ready for nine millimeters? Are you ready? This is how wide nine millimeters is. This is actually 135 degrees of, of your field of view. This is absolutely insane. I have never tested or even seen this wide of a rectilinear uh, focal length. So today we're gonna be looking at the Alawa 9mm f5.6 lens for full frame cameras. This is the world's widest rectilinear lens on the market with barely any distortion and it delivers tack sharp photos and videos. Let's get into it. Lowell was kind enough to send me this review unit of the Lowa 9mm f5.6 lens, so huge shout out to them. I've always loved the products they've produced and I'm always excited to see what new unique lenses they bring to the market year after year. So first, let's take a look at the build quality of this lens. We're looking at a full metal construction with a beautiful but compact design. To list the specs, this lens has a focal length of 9mm, a maximum aperture of f5.6, with native versions supporting the Leica M and L mounts, the Nikon Z mount, as well as the Sony FE mount. Of course, the lens is manual focus only, and it sports a very smooth focus ring, as well as a focus ring lever to make smooth focus transitions easier. One of my favorite things that Lawa does for their full frame lenses is provide physical focus distance markers directly on the lens so you can tell what will be in focus at a certain f-stop and distance combination. This makes setting focus even without focus assist tools like focus peaking significantly easier. Finally, this lens has five aperture blades, so you'll be looking at pentagonal shaped bokeh balls. But wait, typically with a lens this wide, you wouldn't even consider bokeh, right? because you'd have to be so close to a subject at this field of view and at f5.6, there's probably any background blur, right? Well, think again, the minimum focus distance on this lens is 12 centimeters. That means this is for all intents and purposes, a ultra wide angle lens capable of macro photography. Honestly, even before getting to the image quality test, the Lawa 9mm f5.6 is one of the most unique and interesting lenses I've looked at, even just on paper. But let's get into the image quality test. Funny enough, this lens is so wide that actually getting shots of my 8x10 inch uh, test chart was actually incredibly hard. This lens was basically about like a few inches away from the test chart just so I could fill up the full frame. So what did I actually learn from doing these tests? Well, one of the first things I noticed is that f5.6, the maximum aperture of this lens, you get incredibly sharp centers with very sharp corners. And while corner sharpness usually isn't that important when you're talking about like telephoto lenses, because you're doing portrait work and you're not necessarily focusing on the corners, when it comes to the things that this lens is good at, like landscape, real estate, architectural photography, corner sharpness often is just as important as center sharpness because usually you're trying to look at the entire picture. And of course, as you close the lens down from f5.6 to f8, f11, and even down to f22, the lens just gets even sharper, both in the center and in the corners. In terms of artifacts at f5.6, you'll notice that there's some blue and yellow chromatic aberrations in both the center and in the corners of the images. But I would like to note that it's actually a very minimal amount of chromatic aberration. And of course, like most other lenses, as you close that lens down to like f8, these chromatic aberrations just go away. Now on the topic of vignetting, while this lens does have some vignetting, especially when it's wider open at f5.6, uh, if you look at these images between f5.6, f8, f11, um, it gets a little brighter in the corners, but the vignetting isn't really that strong at all. There's only some darkness in the corners. So that's good news. And finally, of course, we wanna take a look at distortion. Now, while as you can tell from the frames of these, this video so far, uh, distortion is pretty well controlled. But when you push this lens that close up to the test grid where uh, you're inches away, you can start seeing that there is some barrel distortion. As you'll notice in the corner of the image, you'll see that the lines bow out a little bit, indicating that this lens has some barrel distortion. But 
Obviously in real life practice, this is basically not even seen at all since all the photos and videos I've taken with this lens have incredibly straight lines. There's so little distortion, honestly, that you might as well call this a distortion-free lens because for all intents and purposes, it is. So like, what do you even use a nine millimeter lens for? Vlogging? Well, I mean, you could vlog with it and it would kind of feel like uh, vlogging with like a GoPro because that's how wide the field of view is. But I also wouldn't recommend it for vlogging because of two reasons. Um, one, I mean, this field of view is so wide, like, yeah, I don't think you understand. My arm, I'm only one arm's length away from the lens right now, but I look like I'm a mile away, which is great. You're gonna show a lot of background, but at the same time, the distortions, even though it's a distortion-free lens, the way physics works, right? Like I, I'm near the camera, how it has to be interpreted by the camera is my arm now looks like a noodle. So uh, that's one reason why it wouldn't be the best for vlogging. Uh, and then reason number two is gonna be because the maximum aperture is f5.6. So unless you're talking about a bright day or a, a very well lit interior, um, you're gonna have to be pushing your ISO pretty high. And that means for in the most, most times you're gonna have really grainy footage. Fortunately, I'm shooting on the a7S III and because it has dual ISO, uh, if you haven't heard about my review from the a7S III, go check that video out. But because it has dual ISOs, uh, I'm shooting at like 25,000 ISO right now just so I can get this properly exposed. If you were shooting 25,000 ISO on any other camera, uh, like the a6600, you're gonna have a really grainy uh, shot. So like, what would you use it for then? Well, it, this lens would absolutely kill it in a few fields of photography. We're talking about architecture, landscape, and real estate. In those fields, I feel like it's gonna be, not gonna lie, kind of game changing because you don't really get this kind of perspective normally from any other lens. With the zero distortion rectilinear lens at nine millimeters, you can really take a new perspective when doing things like capturing uh, buildings, the exteriors of buildings. Now you can be much closer, but still get a huge field of view showing you everything. It'll definitely provide a unique perspective. And for real estate, of course, it'll work for certain types of uh, houses. Now it's not gonna work for large rooms because in a large room, it makes everything look kind of way too big and makes the viewer feel too distant from the room, it really is, has a jarring effect. But if you're gonna talk about like this photo of my office, like smaller rooms, it, it gives you an interesting, not necessarily a realistic perspective, but you get a perspective of everything in the room, which while it won't be photo realistic, it will be a very creative shot that lets you sell your the house or the building in a very new and creative way. Here are my thoughts. When it comes to comparisons of this lens, there's really nothing else in the market that rivals the field of view, distortion correction, and sharpness. The closest lens I can think of is the Laowa 12mm f2.8 full frame lens or the Laowa 9mm f2.8 APS-C lens that I've previously talked about. If you're looking for an extremely wide angle lens, this is probably one of your only options. That's the thing about Laowa. They try to make extremely compelling lenses by producing high quality products, but they don't do just that. They also produce these lenses in the markets that just previously didn't exist. Making high quality, unique, one of a kind lens is kind of Laowa's MO. Just like how I've never seen a ultra wide angle lens like this that's also capable of macro photography, we had never seen anything like the Laowa 24 millimeter F14 probe lens. With these lenses, you can create some unique looks that no one else could. So even though this lens comes in at $800, you wouldn't just be buying a very well-built lens with terrific optical quality, but you'd also be buying the right to be the first few people to capture images that look like this. Just like how those who own the probe lens were able to produce the first footage of its kind. In my opinion, if you're a macro photographer who likes photographing tiny subjects, or if you're a real estate or architectural photographer or a landscape photographer, this lens can escalate your work to the next level of creativity and expand your portfolio. If you're interested in checking out this lens, the link will be in the description down below. All right, that's it for this one. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and get notified of when new content is released. Question of the day to you guys, would you vlog on this lens? <laughs> and also, what do you think would look absolutely incredible with a wide field of view like this? Drop your answers in the comment section down below. All right, and as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.